Good morning. How are you today? Happy Wednesday. I'm sitting here having my coffee. I hope you're having a good week. Woo! Many challenges these weeks, aren't there? We are still studying in our book, uh, Gentle and Lowly. Love, 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 love this book. I hope that you have gotten on to um, see some of my videos about all the chapters that we've done. Um, an amazing book that talks about um, God's heart. Um, oh, that we could have a heart like God. Um, our verse for today is Jeremiah 31 20. If you have your Bibles, let's go there. This chapter is called Yearning Bowels. Uh, Jeremiah 31 20. Grab your Bible. Jeremiah 31 20 says, Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he a pleasant child? For since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore, my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, saith the Lord. And then we want to go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for another day. Thank you, God, for the birds that are singing outside the window, Lord. Thank you, God, for um, hope. Thank you, God, for grace. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you, God, for your favor. Thank you, God. Um, I was thinking back this morning, Lord, in all the ways that you helped me. Um, Lord, in so many situations that looked hopeless, Lord, that you helped me. Um, miracles only done by your hand. And Lord, I just want to um, encourage anyone listening to this today, Lord, that we have hope with you. We have hope with you. Lord, it's, it's not too late to turn around and, and choose Jesus. Thank you, God, for just always being there, Lord. You are the constant in my life, even when everything else is changing so drastically and and uh, so many things are hard, Lord. You are the constant in my life. Thank you, Father Jesus, for just always being there, ready, listening, and, and answering me and giving me peace in the storms and and walking with me, God, thank you, Jesus, for it. I pray that you go before me now in this Bible study, Lord, that um, you would have exactly what we need for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we look at this, um, it talks about the different points in Jeremiah and what God is saying in each of them. Um, uh, in chapter one, he talks about, I will declare my judgments against them for all their evil. That's in, in um, chapter 116, that's verse 16. In chapter two, verse 13, it says, my people have forsaken me. In chapter three, it says, you have polluted the land with your vile whoredom. In chapter four, it says, oh, Jerusalem, how long shall your wicked thoughts lodge within you? That was chapter four, verse 14. Chapter 5, verse 23 says, This people has a stubborn and rebellious heart. Chapter 6 says, As a well keeps its water fresh, so she keeps fresh her evil. That was chapter 6, verse 7. It says, and so on through 29 chapters. And then on the other side of chapters 30 to 33, the rest of the book is judgment against the nations. But here in the center of the book, the pinnacle from which the whole 52 chapter book can be viewed is the book of consolation. And within these four chapters, perhaps the text that sums it all up best is 3120, which is exactly what we read. Ephraim is another term for Israel. God's people, though it appears to be a sort of divine term of affection for Israel throughout the Old Testament, and God asks, is he my darling child? God is not wondering. It's a declaration. And even um, it says, it's a declaration clothed in the gentleness of a question. His people are his dear son and even his darling child. For as often as I speak against him, I do remember him still. Um, do I do remember him still. Remember here is not faculty of recall. This is God. He is all-knowing. He holds all truth about all things in all times in his mind with equal perfect knowledge. Remember here is covenant language. It is relational. 
This, rem this is remembering not as the alternative to forgetting, but as the alternative to forsaking. Forsaking, by the way, means turn his back on us. And then, and then it goes on. So God, in the middle of all these chapters in Jeremiah, talks about his love for us. He remembers his love for us. His heart, he wants to give us mercy. He wants to give us grace. He wants to help us. And still, it talks about all those things as well as keeps its water fresh. So she keeps her fresh her keeps fresh her evil. So God is constantly looking to us, wanting to give us mercy, wanting to give us grace. If we would just turn around and face him and say, God, I love you. I love you, Jesus. Help me. Help me be like you, Lord, and not who I am, right? Um, it's here. I want to read this. This one other part it says we need to understand that however long we have walking, been walking with the Lord, whether we have never read the whole Bible or have a PhD in it, we have a perverse resistance to this. It says out of his heart flows mercy out of ours reluctance to receive it. We are the cool and calculating ones, not he. He is open armed. We are stiff, we stiff arm. Our naturally decaffeinated views of God's heart might feel right because we are being stern with ourselves, not letting ourselves off the hook too easily. Such sternness feels appropriately morally serious, but this deflecting of God's yearning heart does not reflect scripture's testimony about how God feels towards his own. God is of course morally serious far more than we are, but the Bible takes us by the hand and leads us out from under the feeling that his heart for us wavers according to our loveliness. Not true. God's heart confounds our intuitions of who he is. Confounds is uh, that it, it means cause surprise or confusion by acting against the, their accusations. It says... Um, Thomas Goodwin quotes Jeremiah 31, 20, and then deduces that if this is true of God, how much more of Christ? He explains that such a text may afford us the strongest consolations and encouragements in the presence of many sins in our lives. Listen, God loves us and he wants to love us. He just wants us to come back to him. See, when we start sinning and we start... Um, when we when we when bad things happen and when we sin we pull away from Jesus instead of turning around right away right away we need to turn around and we need to say god forgive me i love you please forgive me let me try again i love you jesus instead of that you know what we do we turn around and we start going the other way and we we blame god and we um we we blame him and we hate him and we don't love him it just just like it said right there instead of remembering and recognizing god loves us he sent his son to die on that cross for us he doesn't change we are changing like the wind right the wind blows this way we change the wind blows that way we change um and and a lot of times listen bad stuff happens to everyone Bad stuff happens to everyone. It rains on the just and the unjust, doesn't it? But how we respond to the stress, how we respond to the struggles in our life and to the things that go wrong, that's what counts. Listen, it counts. It counts. We need to be a people that that run to the Lord in, in our struggles and bad things that happen. We need to run to the Lord looking for what he has to say about it, seeing what the Bible has to say about it, remembering where he brought us from. I want you to stop right now and think about where God has brought you from and where did he bring you from and what has he saved you from and what prayers has he answered for you? I was thinking about that the last two days and there are so many answered prayers I couldn't even tell you. Miracles that couldn't have happened unless Jesus' hand did it for me. And so 
Today, I want to encourage you to stand with Jesus. Do not be wavering as the wind blows. Let's not be a people that waver. Let's not, um, you know, I feel like Satan is is whispering. He, he whispers to us. And we listen. And we listen and we believe it. No, I'm sorry. That is not what God says. That is not what God's word says about it. We got to go back to this and then we have to stand on the word of God and we have to believe that he loves us. He fights for us. He wants us to be a people called by his name, right? He wants us to stand with him and and show love. We talked about before that, you know, the world will know us by our love. Oh, that our hearts would be softened to a world that is hurting and struggling and there's so many people with anger and there's so many people with, um, I, I believe it comes from fear and anxiety. I believe it comes from a, a mistrust of the government and all the things that are happening. Listen, listen, our hope is not in this world. This is not our home. We are just a passing through here. And, and listen, if we keep our goals in front of us to what is important to Jesus, that's helping as many people as we can come to know him and have them in their heart. It's, it's having uh, people come to know the Lord Jesus Christ in our heart. And that's from the youngest age to the oldest age. See, while we're still alive, we have the opportunity to change. It's only when we die that there is no opportunity to change anymore, right? Um, as as Satan whispers these things to you about you're not good enough, you're not strong enough, look at that situation that you're in. Oh my gosh, it seems hopeless. How in the world are you ever going to figure that out? Listen here. Some things that God has been walking me through this week is dealing with people is very hard and situations are super hard. And people are going to be people no matter where they are, whether that's in church, whether that's in the world, wherever. Unfortunately, we are all human people who make mistakes, right? But when we come to every situation in our life and we deal with it the way Jesus Christ wants us to deal with it, you see a situation, you have a situation, you get your Bible out, you study the word of God, you get your Bible study out, you study that Bible study, and then you get on your knees and you pray to the Lord Jesus Christ for the answers. And then guess what? You get dressed anyway, and you go out afraid inside, and you do it anyway. And God will show up. He always has. He has for me this week. And he's been showing me, I just need you to show up, Julie. I just need you to show up and I'm going to help you. And I'm not going to let you down. And I want you to remember where I brought you from and where you are right now. And I'm still here. I'm still alive. God still has my story to write. And I want to let him write it. I want to let him write my story, not Satan and not me. Because you know what? I make mistakes and I can't see like Jesus. I can't see tomorrow. So, so girlfriend, get your big girl panties on. We got jobs to do today. And guess what? We ain't done. Woohoo! Woohoo! <clears throat> Let's go fight these battles. You got this. No giving up. God's got you. I hope this Bible study helped you today. Remember, God loves us. He doesn't want to give up on us. Have an amazing day. I love you.